In this video we are going to see how easy it is to play the 150 attack. We will study an exceptional game in which White will use the 150 attack and will be able to carry out his attack by making simple and natural moves. White played e4, placing a pawn in the center. Black responded with d6. The perk defense. White played d4, occupying the center with his pawns. Black played knight f6, developing his king's knight and attacking the e4 pawn. Knight c3, developing the queen's knight and defending the e4 pawn. Black played g6, with the idea of developing the king's bishop through the fianchetto. White played knight f3, developing his king's knight towards its natural square, from where it increases control over the central squares. White has made very simple and natural moves and has a very good game. Black played bishop g7, developing the king's bishop and preparing to castle. Bishop e3, developing the queen's bishop towards a good square, from where it reinforces the defense of the d4 pawn and at the same time increases control over the c5 square. In this way, black c5 break will be very difficult to carry out. Furthermore, White prepares to continue with queen d2, with the idea of castling on the long side and attacking on the king side, advancing with his h pawn. Black castled. White played queen d2, mobilizing the queen and preparing to castle on the long side. White's plan is to invade with his bishop on the h6 square, then advance with h4 and h5 and organize a strong attack against the king side. Black played c6, with the idea of preparing the advance of his pawns on the queen side, to try to create counterplay. White played bishop h6, invading with his bishop in the opposing castling and attacking the bishop on g7, with the idea of eliminating it, since it is the best defender of the opposing castling. Now, black played queen a5, moving the queen to the queen side to prepare the counterattack in this area. Black's idea is to continue with e5, to react in the center. However, capturing on h6 is not a real threat since, if white made any move, for example h3. Now, it wouldn't be good bishop takes h6. Because after queen takes h6, knight takes e4. Now white castles long and it is not possible knight takes c3, since white responds with knight g5 and black has to give up his queen to avoid checkmate. Since capturing the e4 pawn is no a real threat, white could now play h4, beginning to advance his pawns to accelerate his kingside attack. In the game, however, white played bishop d3, completing the development of his minor pieces and reinforcing the defense of the e4 pawn. Black played e5, placing a pawn in the center and attacking against the d4 pawn, to eliminate an opponent's central pawn and relieve the pressure. The game continued d takes e5, d takes e5, exchanging pawns in the center. White played h4, beginning to advance with his pawns on the king side, with the idea of continuing with h5 and opening lines to attack the enemy king. Black played bishop g4, taking advantage of the weakness of the g4 square, increasing control over the h5 square and at the same time attacking the f3 knight. White played h5, continuing his attack and sacrificing a pawn, with the idea of opening lines to attack the enemy king. If black now captures with the knight, knight h4 would follow, with the idea of continuing with f3, g4, and knight f5 with a very strong attack. And if black captures on h6. After queen takes h6 white has an advantage. For example if knight f4, white plays knight takes g6 and checkmate is inevitable. And if after the move h5, Black captures on f3 with the bishop, white captures on g6 and is winning. For example, in case of bishop g4, to defend the bishop, white follows with g takes h7 check and the black king receives checkmate. 
For example, in case of king h8, then bishop takes g7 check. King takes g7. Queen g5 check. King h8, and queen takes f6 is checkmate. And if black captures the h7 pawn with the knight. Then bishop takes g7. King takes g7. Queen h6 check. King g8. And queen takes h7 is checkmate. In the game after h5, black played bishop takes h5, capturing the white pawn. White played knight h4, with the idea of continuing with f3 and g4 and leaving the opposing bishop trapped. Black played bishop g4, with the idea of escaping with the bishop and preventing it from being trapped. The game continued on f3, attacking the bishop and forcing it to retreat. Black played bishop e6. White played g4, continuing the advance of his pawns on the king side. White has sacrificed a pawn but has a very strong attack and also black is behind in development and still has many problems to solve. Now black played b5, with the idea of trying to create counterplay on the queen side. Now white made the knight f5 move, invading the enemy camp with the knight and threatening to capture the bishop on g7. It is not possible to capture the knight, since after g takes f5, the g file is left open and white's attack is decisive. After e takes f5, the bishop on e6 is attacked. For example, after bishop c4, white plays queen g5, threatening to give checkmate. Black has to play knight e8, to avoid mate. But after f6, white wins. And if after knight f5 black captures on h6 with the bishop, white plays queen takes h6, threatening to give checkmate on g7. After for example g takes f5, white plays queen g5 check. King h8. Queen takes f6 check. King g8. Queen g5 check. King h8. Queen h6 and the checkmate is unstoppable. In the game after knight f5 black played bishop takes f5, eliminating the opponent's dangerous knight. The game continued e takes f5. If black now plays b4 to try to counterattack on the queen side, white can continue f takes g6, continuing his attack on the king side. And in case black captures the knight, white captures on h7 and the black king will not escape mate. For example, after king h8, then bishop g7 check. King takes g7. Queen h6 check. King h8 and queen takes f6 is checkmate. And in case of knight takes h7, bishop takes f7 check. King takes h7. Bishop takes g7 check. King takes g7 and queen g5 is checkmate. In the game after the capture on f5, black played knight a6, completing the development of his minor pieces. White played bishop takes g7, eliminating the Fianchetto's bishop, which is the best defender of the black's castling. The game continued king takes g7. Queen h6 check. King g8. g5, attacking the opposing knight, to expel it from its excellent defensive position. The knight on f6 defends the h7 square and avoids the checkmate on that square. So, white wants to expel the knight which is the last piece that can defend the black king. Black played knight h5, to defend his knight and at the same time blocking the h-file to prevent checkmate. But white played rook takes h5 and black resigned. Black is defenseless, since after g takes h5, White plays f6 and it is checkmate on the next move.